to you about high blood pressure in teens and adolescents today. According to the American Heart Association, the incidence of high blood pressure or hypertension is increasing annually at an alarming rate, especially in young adults and in teenagers under the age of 20. Teenage boys are more likely than girls to have high blood pressure. They have a three to four times higher risk than girls in developing high blood pressure. Statistically, according to the American Heart Association, one out of every five adolescents has high blood pressure or borderline high blood pressure. The incidence of high blood pressure is as follows. White males, 33.9%, and females, 31.3%. African American males, 43%, and females 45.7%, Mexican American males 27.8%, and females 28.9%. Today I'm going to be talking to Marina. Marina is a 19 year old black female. She has no, no known medical problems, currently is on birth control, occasionally smokes. Marina does not know what her blood pressure is currently and she has minimal knowledge about high blood pressure in itself. Her height is 5'7", her weight 140, which would, when we broke it down to her BMI, it's 22. That puts her in a normal range. She has a sedentary lifestyle. She works. She will be returning to college in the fall. So now let's introduce you to Marina. All right, so Marina, I'm going to ask you a few questions and I'm going to show you how to use a blood pressure monitor. But there's some information that I want you to understand. That high blood pressure is growing in especially the African American culture and it's happening to younger and younger people. You're 19, correct? Yes. All right, so um, you, a lot of people who are in your age range don't believe that this is going to be something that's going to affect them. But what's happening is that it is affecting you and so it affects girls especially who are on birth control and who smoke. They have a higher incidence of getting high blood pressure than girls who don't. Um, boys have a tendency to get blood pressure higher, um, higher numbers than girls. But even when your blood pressure is running 100, the top number is 100 or 110, if you have a sedentary lifestyle, you smoke, have the birth control, these are things um, if you're overweight, if you um, drink alcohol, these things put you at a higher risk for developing high blood pressure in the long run. And when you have high blood pressure, the ultimate thing that can happen is that you can have a stroke or a heart attack. And that's quite severe. And you think that that won't happen to you when you're young. And he's like, that's something that happens to people my grandmother's age. Well, no. We have a lot, a lot of patients in the hospital now who are in their 20s who are having strokes. And I mean strokes that are debilitating where they can't use a part of their body. The whole left side or the right side is paralyzed. And so um, heart attacks are happening young and younger. So these are things that you want to look into and consider. And, and hopefully when we're, when we're done, you'll be able to monitor your own blood pressure and do it regularly. How about blood pressure? Does it run in your family? Yeah, my grandma has high blood pressure. And so what do you know about blood pressure from your grandma? I know she has to check it uh, at least twice a day, three times at the time. Do you know what high means? I don't know. what. The, the number is okay. when I know if it's high All right, so I'm going to be telling you that the golden number, they say, is 120. But once it gets above 140, then it makes doctors feel like that's enough to say that that's concerning, okay? I'm going to tell you exactly what blood pressure is. It's the pressure when your heart beats. It squeezes the blood up against the blood vessels, and that pressure when it first pumps is your first number. That's your top number. That's systolic. And they would like that to be... 100 to 130 at the most. The bottom number is when your heart relaxes and there's still blood flowing through that vessel, but there's, that's the relaxed number, that's your diastolic. And they would like that number to be anywhere from 60 to 80. Once it hits 90, they consider that high blood pressure. Nowadays, they are considering anything from 120 to 139 pre-high blood pressure, pre-hypertension, okay? So the, the term hypertension is actually what it is, but that's the word, high blood pressure. All right, so um, I know you told me that you're um, 140 pounds, 5'7", mm -hmm. and what we do is we take that number, your, your weight, and we multiply your height in inches times itself, and we get a number, and we multiply that by 703, and we came out with a number for you of 22. That means that you're not overweight. 18.5 to 24, those are good numbers. That means that you're not overweight, and that's where you want to stay. 
But you want to keep an eye on that weight because as you get older, you're going to start holding on to a little weight. And of course, you haven't had any children, but that adds on some weight. Sedentary lifestyle, you told me you don't really exercise. Those kind of things will cause you. Do you eat out much? Not really. Okay. I try not to eat out much. Right. How about do you eat things that have salt in them? Potato chips? Yes, I do. Okay, so. So what happens is that salt is like a sponge. It causes you to hold fluid in your body. And when that fluid builds up, you'll start getting swollen, and it also increases the pressure in your blood vessels. So then that makes your blood pressure go higher. And remember what I told you, that when that pressure goes higher and higher, over time, it damages the blood vessels and it results in a stroke or a heart attack, okay? So it's real, real important that you take these things serious now. I'm going to show you how to use a blood pressure monitor and then I'll have you show me how what you learn how to do. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So here's some reading material. One thing it tells you is that you always want to try to relax before you take it, at least five minutes before you take it. You don't want to go running and then sit down and say, oh, I need to check my blood pressure. Okay. Just relax a little bit. It's better if you take it first thing in the morning after you've gone to the bathroom. Because sometimes just having full blood can make your blood pressure a little higher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Try to use the same arm. You want your arm to be at a, at a same level as your heart, you know, you don't want to dang your way down here, that'll affect it. Um, when you first get a monitor, if you want to get a digital monitor, you can get the one that you pump up yourself or you have a button to push and turn it on. But what you want to do is you want to get a nurse or a doctor, you can even go to a fire department and they'll do it, but you want them to check your monitor to see what they're getting to make sure your monitor is accurate because some monitors are better than others and we don't want you to be concerned and overly concerned and thinking that you have high blood pressure because your monitor is reading low or we don't want you to miss something and you think your blood pressure is low and it's actually higher. So make sure that when you first get it that you get it checked and then annually. Okay? So, we're going to take this on. If I see you have a sleeve on, and it's quite thin. Sometimes having things rolled up can affect your blood pressure, so be careful. Um, we might even be able to just smooth that out and just um, just leave this little area open. Okay, so that might give you a better view. So these cuffs come with the little uh, either the ones that you wrap around your arm, or if this one has this little metal thing where you can just kind of leave that right in that metal thing and then slide your arm in. What's important is that this little valve here runs right down the middle of your arm, okay? And then you want to make it snug. Not so tight that it's hurting your arm, but just snug enough so that you can get a finger or two up on you, okay? So this monitor is right here. There's an on-off switch. So we'll turn this switch on. And then it's going to go through a little process, and you're not ready to until you get the little heart and the zebra. Okay? Once you have that, you'll take this bolt and you'll just pump it up. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't have any clue what your blood pressure is, so I'm going to take you to about 140 or 150 and see if that's high enough. Okay? Put okay. it a little tight. relax, try not to talk. Talking can cause your blood pressure. A lot of movement that can affect your reading as well. All right, there's several numbers flashing here. The 108 is the amount of pressure that's exerted through your vessels when your heart pumps. That's a good number because remember I told you, 120 to 130, that's as high as we want it to go, okay? Your bottom number is 72. That's still a good number. We don't want it to be less than 60, but we don't want it to be more than 80. Okay, so you are right in the area you want it to be. And that next little number, that, that's your pulse rate. Okay, a little fast because you're not exercising. When you exercise, that number will come down, and your goal number is 60. You would like for your pulse, because it, what's happening is your heart is having to beat while you're sitting still. It's beating so fast, and eventually it just kind of gets like a, it's a muscle. So when you work any muscle, it gets thick. And when your heart gets thick, then that's not a good thing. So you want to exercise so that that number can come down. Okay? Now, I'm going to turn the machine off. And I'm going to release your arm. And then I'm going to have you demonstrate that you recognize how to do that. Okay? So show me what you know. <laughs> you 
going to do is get that all the way up on this upper arm because this is the little part that makes sure you can bend your arm, okay? Not too tight. <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, so now. There's the heart. Girl. That's good. Now, I think it's more that we did it right behind each other and you were taking a long time to pump it up because we got a little difference. And blood pressures will be different from time to time. Just now we got 127 over 84. But I'm not going to be so concerned with that because we were testing and we were trying and we did it in the same arm. Um, that's one thing is in between blood pressures, if you do want to recheck it, you should wait a few minutes and, uh, and let your arm kind of get a little rest before we pumping it up. Okay? That was very good. Now, can you tell me what a good number is, or, or what, what's the highest number you would want that top number to be? The highest? For it to be high is 150, you said? I don't know what the 140 is. 140. Okay. And that bottom number, what's the highest number you would want? over 90. Once you get to that point, the doctors are concerned and they consider it pre-hypertension if you're running between 120 and 139 and if you're going over 80, they'll consider you pre-hypertensive or pre-high blood pressure. So um, those are numbers that you want to know. So you want to remember that number and you want to check every now and then and see what your blood pressure is. So I'm going to give you a little card where you can kind of keep up with it. We'll write down what your number was, the first number that we got. And um, I'll be checking back with you, okay? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. High blood pressure is the force that blood pressure exerts on the artery walls when the heart beats. When the pressure is too high, it can damage the artery walls and reduce blood flow to the body tissues. This is called high blood pressure or hypertension. You can have high blood pressure and not know that you have it. It's called the silent killer. High blood pressure cannot be cured, but it can be controlled with the right treatment. Systolic pressure is the pressure of the artery when the heart pumps. Diastolic pressure is the pressure between heartbeats when the arteries are more relaxed. The top number of the blood pressure is the systolic and the bottom number is the diastolic. Normal blood pressure, according to the American Heart Association, runs between 100 over 60 to 120 over 80. Now, Prehypertension is now considered a systolic of 120 to 139, and diastolic would be 80 to 89. Stage 1 hypertension is considered to have a systolic blood pressure of 140 over 159, and diastolic 90 over 99. Stage 2 hypertension would be considered a blood pressure systolic of 160 over 79, the top number, and a bottom number diastolic of 100 over 109. It is considered a hypertensive crisis once the systolic blood pressure is 180 or greater or diastolic blood pressure is 110 or greater. Treatment for high blood pressure includes a change in your diet and that would need a low sodium or low fat diet. Low fat would be 3 grams of fat or less per serving and low sodium would be 140 milligrams or less per serving. You need to teach the patient to read food labels for content of sodium cholesterol, fats. They must increase their intake of fruit, vegetables, lean protein, and whole grains. Avoid smoking and alcohol use. They need to increase activity and that means not just walking around in your job but 30 minutes of continuous exercise where you're trying to get your heart rate up to at least 100 beats per minute. Again, Smoking is one of the biggest things that can lead to heart disease and so you really need to join a smoking cessation program to get off of cigarettes because that is going to be very detrimental to your health. Medications that help lower blood pressure, um, a lot of times they'll start them on low doses of diuretics, hydrochlorothiazide, um, and then something that's going to work to lower the blood pressure and it will vary by person. Oh, 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 oh,